Connecting the world. Connecting the world. This is the DJJ International Radio EU. So, uh, Robbie Wells, the candidate for the uh, Democratic nomination for the President of the United States, how you doing? I'm doing just fine. It's great to be here today and uh, to be able to get this message out to all the listeners. Well, th- that's exactly why we're, we're we're on the phone. I think that uh, it is important for people to hear, you know, who's out there, who's running, and, and what it is. And that's what we want to find out about you. So tell us a little bit about your message. Well, my message is, is plain and simple. Uh, my message takes the absolute best from the left wing, absolute best from the right wing, and it restores prosperity to our land, our land that we have lost in the past. Uh, several decades. Uh, mm-hmm. I plan is called Eagleomics because it does take the best from both wings. But this plan r- returns millions of manufacturing jobs to the United States that have been lost overseas due to ma- massive outsourcing because of bad legislation in D.C. This plan also creates millions of jobs to become uh, 100% sustainable energy independent. It also creates millions of jobs to improve our infrastructure. It has a component that makes college education free all the way to a bachelor's degree, and it eliminates the $1.2 trillion in student loan debt. And my, my plan also covers uh, health care as far as making health care free for every American uh, in, here in the United States. So we've got a great plan. We know how we're going to fund it. It's a solution to some serious problems that we have in the United States today. So, so your your uh, background is uh, as a uh, a coach of a uh, football team. Am I correct? I was an educator and a coach for twenty years. Uh, uh, my last uh, coaching position, I was the head football coach slash CEO of an NCAA Division One team, um, where we you know had pretty good success. I've also been the CEO of a, a business for several years in Charlotte, North Carolina. I uh, recently finished uh, my book, which will be published here in the next month or two, which uh, you know, I'm, I'm pretty proud of that as well. So uh, I can say that I'm an author. Right. So, so here, I mean, you're running for president in, the, in a time when uh, uh, a lot of Americans are, are looking for something different, and, and you're not a career politician. Is that, that's fair to say, isn't it? It is fair to say, in fact, that's exactly what America's looking for. If you look at the Republican polls right now, they, they've had two debates, and the top three candidates uh, are not career politicians. In fact, they're just like me. They have proven leadership ability, but they are considered Washington outsiders, just like myself. On the Democratic side, I am really the only Washington outsider that has gotten proof or say. Uh, now we, we've we've done about 40 television interviews since April, uh, local and regional television. We're still doing our best to, to to break in on the national stage. Although Fox News just a couple of weeks ago reported that I am one of the top eight Democratic candidates for president in 2016. So what we what I found is that a lot of people are surprisingly. I mean, you've, you've got the usual. Uh, uh, headliners out there for the Democratic Party, I think, uh, with uh, Hillary Clinton, et cetera, and uh, and uh, uh, Vice President Biden, uh, but also the the Bernie Sanders is somewhat of a of a big thing. What would be the difference between you and Bernie Sanders? He's he's very big here. Just to let you know. Uh, well, I think he's he's about seventy five years old. Uh, I'm forty seven. <laughs> I'm, I'm the new I'm the new kid on the block, and it, it really goes back to what President Obama said about. Ten months ago, in his sit-down interview with George Stephanopoulos, when when George asked uh, the president what he thought about the upcoming election with with Mrs. Clinton, and President Obama said he thought that she'd be a formidable opponent. Uh, she has served her country well as Secretary of State, as the First Lady, and as the Senator from New York. But he thought that America was looking for a new car smell, someone without as much political mileage as himself. Yes. If that's the case, I'm the only one on the Democratic side that really has that new car smell uh, that hasn't been all over Washington per se. And and uh, it, it's uh, real obvious that uh, you know with with the numbers that you see in these polls that uh, that that's exactly what America is looking for. You know what you're representing there. 
Um, so my question to you is, is that uh, let me ask you two things real quick. What do you think about the situation going on in uh, in Syria now with the Russians uh, uh, coming in there and bombing? What, do you have a thought on that? Well, I'm, I'm always one that looks as war being the last option. It's always an option, but it should be the absolute last option. I believe in diplomacy, and I believe that when when great minds can come together and work together for a peaceful solution, uh, it is the best thing for all the people, not only in the United States, but around the globe. We have been in constant conflict over in the Middle East since the early 90s, simply because we are no closer to being 100% energy independent in the United States now than we were in 1991 when we started with Desert Storm. It was President Kennedy in the 60s that said, but it was his goal by the end of that decade to put a man on the moon, and we did it. Mm -hmm. It's my goal as the next president, hopefully, good Lord willing, if the people see it my way, it is my goal that by the end of this decade, our country will achieve 100% sustainable energy independence, which will get us out of all these conflicts in the Middle East. But to answer your question about Russia, uh, you know, We've got, to, we've got to pay very close attention to what is going on over there right now. But at the same time, we've got to take care of our own backyard or we are not going to have a backyard. We have 50 million Americans living in poverty right now and half our population existing on low income. Yet we give away almost $60 billion a year in foreign aid. That doesn't make any sense. Wow. That's, uh, those are some staggering numbers. Uh, let me ask you uh, maybe a, a, a a forward-thinking question uh, regarding energy, because I saw your your web page that you have, and it it was uh, really cool. It showed the energy uh, solar cells with the green uh, electrical plug-in. I thought that was a nice graphic, but but um, not really understand all that stuff. But uh, but I do hear a lot of talk about helium three as an energy source for uh, the world, not just America. But that it's mostly located on the moon. Is is that something that uh, that you would look at mining? Or, well, well let, let me just say this. We, we need to look at all avenues to become energy independent right here in the United States. Um, we've actually, we know that we have the technology to harness the energy of the ocean waves. It just takes an awful lot of money to do it. It would take probably about one and a half trillion dollars to set it up just on, on the East Coast alone. There's not very many private companies out there that are willing to take that kind of risk, even if it is a good risk. That's where your infrastructure has to come in uh, with the federal government actually helping uh, these companies get to that point. And then the government turning it over to these, these independent companies. Right. So uh, here's your, I'm going to ask you a, a, a tough question in a second, but first let me uh, – uh, uh, Give you a, a an honest flattery uh, uh, observation. I see that your your campaign has a, a very diverse background of, of people that are are getting behind you, and that I like to see. I like to see that diversity, and uh, and, and uh, so so what what I'm seeing in you is is a diversity, not just ethnic, uh, but uh, economic as well, and uh, um, you know the leadership qualities as a uh, as a, a team leader and such a great sport as a you know, college football. So, so having said that, though, let me ask you this: What do you, what would make you different than these other guys who are running or girls? And 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 how can you go about it by yourself as an individual, as a, as president? Even uh, how would you put the team together to do that? And and what would the difference be? I guess that's the question. Well, let me just say this. We're going to be able to do something that no other president in the past 30 years has been able to do and what no other candidate, uh, my opponent, is going to be able to do. And that bring back millions of manufacturing jobs that we have lost in the past 25 years due to massive outsourcing because of bad legislation uh, in Washington, D.C. The reason my opponent's and not talk about bringing those jobs back is because they are tied to special interest groups that have operations that are in foreign countries. These special interest groups want to keep the jobs over there, making cheap goods and selling them back to the United States. 
uh, because they're making a bunch of money. These special interest groups go to my opponents and they say, listen, just keep the same rules in play and we're going to fund your, your campaign bid, which is what's going on. There's the difference with myself because I only have one special interest group. My special interest group is 330 million Americans. You see, everybody that's listening to this, this uh, interview right now, my special interest group is you. Right. Well, so so having said that, RobbieWells dot com or RobbieWells two thousand sixteen dot com is your website, and uh, uh, the rising up is is I guess the theme of your campaign, and rising up I, I take it means the 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 country rising up to uh, to grab the the brass ring that's there. Well, you're, you're exactly right. My campaign slogan is "Rise Up." Let me just say this: we've all been through midnight experiences, such as the loss of a loved one. Uh, the loss of a job, a divorce. But our country has been through a midnight experience in the past seven or eight years with an economic meltdown, with a government shutdown, constant conflict in the Middle East, 50 million Americans living in poverty and half our population existing on low income. But I'm here to tell you about midnight. It doesn't last very long because at 12.01 it is considered morning. It is time to rise up. And America deserves a leader that's got a plan that is going to rise this country up out of the ashes of an economic meltdown back into the glory of prosperity, which is what this campaign platform is going to do. And, and I think it's it's something to point out that um, though you're not a political uh, uh, family and you're not you, you're not a political or a career politician, you've had to deal with a lot of politics. I'm sure being that at, at uh, universities and and uh, dealing with some of the, the political issues that you have to in, in your home state and all that. Um, you know, I'm looking forward to uh, some good things out of it. But let me ask you this real quick. quick. Um, my background in spinning, uh, uh, is spinning records as a, as a DJ, and we have the largest DJ group in the world, over 12,000 members around the world, 130 countries involved. And uh, it, it's more of an arts group, uh, you might say. Um, but uh, uh, what I'd like to do is, is, is say that when one you become president, that uh, that you invite uh, some DJs in there from from our group and and maybe spend at your inaugural ball. How's that? You know what? That, that sounds absolutely wonderful. We've got all sorts of artists that are that are uh, jumping on board with us all of a sudden because they see that we are gaining some momentum. Uh, when I first announced that I was running for president, it was just God and me, literally. Right. Uh, over over the past year and a half, now we have people working literally in every state on this campaign. The momentum is growing. So a lot of people are see, saying, hey, we're going to take this guy serious. He's got a great plan. He's got the people's best interest at heart. Mm -hmm. you know, I love my country. Yeah. I love the people of this country. And as, as I've gone around the country, we've been in 36 states this past year alone on our campaign tour bus. But as I've gone around, I've, I've truly fallen in love with the people of this country. We've got some wonderful people around here that truly love this land and want to see us return this nation to true prosperity. But it's going to take someone like myself that is not tainted with the special interest groups and lobbyists. It's going to take someone like myself that has proven no-nonsense leadership ability, that has thick skin and a backbone, that is not going to bow down and buckle under to these special interest groups so that we make sure that we're doing what's right for the people of this country. Right, well, that, that, that's great. And uh, uh, let me ask you a tough question. What you're saying right now is uh, there's not a person in the world that would disagree with you, but it's it probably obviously tougher to do. I know that... Uh, 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 President Obama said the same thing. I know Donald Trump is saying the same thing. Uh, you know, anyone who has any sense is saying the same thing. How can you do that with with what your your uh, background is? What do you think? Well, I think that I can do that simply because I, I'm not going to be one that's going to lead from the back. That's not leadership at all. And what I mean by that is, you got a lot of leaders. They want to lead strictly by a poll. They want to go out and take a poll to find out if, if what they're doing is, is going to be acceptable to the people. What I think we need to get back to as leaders that are going to do what is right and what they are convicted to do and what they know is in the best interest of this country. 
And I truly believe that someone like myself that can see the beauty in both wings, the left wing and the right wing, is what we need to be moving at for president, because the president is supposed to represent as much of the United States population as he possibly can. Uh, over the past five decades, whoever we've elected as president, on day one, half of Congress fights him on everything that he has done, simply because if he's left-wing, right-wing is going to fight him. Mm-hmm. Now, with my plan, we're going to be able to get a lot accomplished on both sides. Right, right. Uh, and you'll still have some, uh, it sounds like the lobbyists are going to fight you a little bit too, but uh, that's, that's uh, the, the, the ball game that you're, you're, you're about to, you know, I guess, play. And, uh, well, listen, you know, here's the thing about the lobbyists. I'm sure that the lobbyists are going to try to fight me a little bit, but what they need to understand is we've got a plan to bring these jobs back. Okay, and I'll, I'll get into these details a little bit later, but what I will tell you about one of my opponents, you brought him up. And, and since you brought him up, I'm going to go ahead and call him out, and that's uh, uh, the front runner of the Republican Party, Mr. Trump. He mm-hmm. talks a really good deal about bringing the jobs back to the United States, yet he has his clothing line made in China at a cheap price, and he sells it back here for a huge profit. Now, I'm from the South. Where we come from, we call that talking out of both sides of your mouth. <laughs> I think they do that anywhere. They, they, that's what they would say. I mean, if if you're saying for one thing and 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 do showing something different, that's that's what that is. This is that right. So, you know, I, I I really don't like to bash my opponents, but I do like to stand up for the people of the United States. So, um, listen, I, I I I love what I'm hearing from you, and I think that's a that's a good thing. I know the the DJs are. I would like to be able to uh, maybe interview you again and have you on the radio. Uh, um, and uh, if if I we cross paths around the country or in Chicago, I'd like to video uh, do a video interview you know with you for the uh, DJ TV. We have about 1.4 million viewers here in Chicago. Absolutely love it. And for everybody that's listening, we're going to be in Washington, D.C. Uh, next week on the 9th and the 10th, which is Friday and Saturday. Uh, I'll be speaking at the uh, National Press Club Friday morning, uh, the 9th, and then we'll be at the Million Man March on the on the 10th. Uh, so we've got a lot of neat things going. We're also going over to Boys State while we're there uh, on the 9th, the evening of the 9th for a, a, a town hall meeting. So uh, things are heating up. Uh, for everybody that's out there, please check us out at RobbieWells2016.com. May God bless everybody that's listening in today. May God bless our military and our veterans that have laid it on the line for you and for me. And may God continue to bless these United States. Thanks so much. All right, great words, and uh, we'll see you soon. Uh, let me ask you to hang on one second. Can I get you to do a drop? Uh, you're listening to Robbie Wells, 2016, Democratic Presidential Candidate. And you're listening to DJ International Radio. DJ International Radio EU. Hi, you're listening to Robbie Wells, 2016, Democratic Presidential Candidate. And you're listening to DJ International Radio. Connecting the world. Connecting the world. With music. 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 DJ International Radio EU. <laughs> Antonio Gellini. Yes, my dear Mr. Rocky Jones. How are you? I am so excited to talk to you. I just had a conversation with your dear good friend, uh, Robbie Wells. Ah, well, the candidate from the Democratic Party for the President of the United States of America. Yes, and, and what a great thing that is. He's a, he's a great candidate, and uh, I was really pleased with uh, chatting with him. Hey, can you do me a favor? Could I could I get you to speak directly into the phone because uh, I'm recording this, and it, you'll turn out your sound will turn a lot better if you're not on speaker. Okay, my dear. How about that? That's that's great. That's great. So we listen. Uh, the, the conversation that we had. I mean, you know, you know, uh, Robbie Wells, um, uh, and he's connected with with you. Tell us a bit about how is he connected with you, a man running for president of the United States. You know, believe it or not, they have 
Miss Sonia, who uh, happened to know her for 20 years ago during the last, uh, during the Dick Club production, and uh, she's a twin sister. It happened to be born the same year, the same day, and the same month. You know? And, uh, yeah, that's very funny. She the one, uh, yeah, she was what introduced me, but the, the good thing about this man is he uh, been coaching the football and the uh, very champion number of the CEO, and uh, they have a good story about uh, his mother and how it just is amazing how nobody can tell you better than himself. Well, you know, we got to we gotta ask him about that next time. We're going to be talking to him again um, yeah. as his campaign goes, you know, further. But uh, uh, we didn't get into that aspect of it. We, he was very pressed for time, but we got some good stuff. And the, and the fact that he was a coach uh, for a football team, I thought was a, was a, you know, a very good uh, um uh, symbol of him being able to pull a team together to run him as a candidate. You know, Rocky, remind me, remember uh, the people, the four years history you have as an icon of DJ International. Remind me when you honored me for the, the Peace Award. I remember the people come from London, from Holland, from Germany, from all over the world. And they say, Mr. Rocky, you give me the first record, you give me, you know, the yelling you, remember? Yes. yes. Yelling, this, this is the same thing. This is a story about this uh, uh, lobby because he's done with the, you know, the, the, he can tell you exactly the story about the adopted, uh, and he was very proud and about her mother and the uh, uh, former person Carter because his father, uh, Robbie Morris, he was a governor during the uh, President Carter. And uh, when he went to the house of the President Carter, they said to him, like, uh, uh, Mr. President, you'll be, a, you are a, you'll be a president. And he said to him, you, are the, you, are, you will be president too. <laughs> ah, that's funny. That's funny. Hey, but I want to say this, though. This is something I, I, I observed on him. He's not a career politician. He's a normal per working person. He's got some uh, uh, extraordinary ideas on, on how to pull the world, uh, the country together. But um, he's not a career politician, and I, th I, I point out that that's what America seems to be looking for right now. And uh, uh, I look at the our, uh, Republican nominee, three top of them, include Mr. Donald Trump. They have never been disinvolved with this. Uh, the 52 percent of them, they, they don't know anything about this politics. You know what I mean? It's the time America and they recognize somebody, they just not play with the party, they do the job and give the job to American people. Right, right. Well, listen, it was a real good uh, conversation with them. And, uh, you know, I think it's important to get his message out and, and all candidates' messages out. Uh, you know, it certainly doesn't mean, you know, uh, that, uh, uh, you know, um, that, that, you know, DJ National is trying to promote him as a, as a uh, candidate. But what it does mean is that DJ National is trying to do something that more people need to hear. They need to hear the different candidates' voices out there and the fact that he's not... Hillary Clinton, the fact that he's not, you know, Joe Biden, and he's not President Obama, he's not Donald Trump. He's a voice that has not been heard yet, and uh, and so I'm I'm definitely uh, excited about having him on the show. If I am correct me, I'm the same to you, Denison, because you bring the DJ International. You know, I want to be proud of you and proud of the DJ International, and because it's not about Pacific. You know, DJ Pacific mind. You are very open to different, really, uh, passing message yes. and they give you light and hope. With the international, that is a, uh, you know, every every DJ they have different view, and I respect you because you are really open. You are open to everyone with different talented, and that's why you know I see how recognizing DJ international as a music, and I'm sure as a part of it. It should make sense. Well, well, yeah, thank you, and and uh, I, I I don't disagree with you, but but my question is 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 he seems to have a uh, connection to the arts between what what DJ's doing, what the the Family Film Awards is doing. What's that connection? Do you have anything to say about that? You know, you know education, as you know. 
the most important we needed uh, education, basically. And I believe the art, through the art, the communication, through the art of the music, through or the DJ, painting, sculpture, theater, cinema, I think because we are very basically standing for education, and this is uh, we are the same page. Yeah, I, I agree. I agree, and I think that. Uh, I want to surprise you for you because I had a friend of mine, this is Steven, and we're going to meet him very shortly. We are talking about you. We're heading to Las Vegas for a big meeting, but I want to uh, tell you because we're talking about the, the history about the OR, and I want to show it's a short to say hello to you, Steven. Hello, Rocky. How are you? Hi, uh, Steven. Did I get your name correct? That is correct. Steven Nia. N I A and as in the I A. Steven Nia. Yeah. Well well it's great right. great chat with you. You guys are headed up to uh, the big city of Las Vegas? Yes, absolutely. I wanna say that uh, I've known Antonio for more than twenty years. He's a dear friend and uh I've stood by him before and I'm so happy and glad to be standing by him again. He's really truly a uh, a genius in his own way and uh, he his passion and his love the love that he's bringing to this country and to this society uh, and uh, really culminating the worldwide art of the, 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 the Olympia of the seven art uh, of the world is, is such a tremendous tremendous step and, uh, and, and his passion and energy is just really admirable and uh, I am I'm really really proud of him as a friend uh, and, and and I want to thank you uh, also for for making the arrangement and facilitating his award in Chicago for 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 the piece and and this really really means a lot and people like you to to recognize this kind of talent to recognize this kind of passion yeah uh, so I just wanted to express my appreciation for everything you've done as well, well my friend. Th uh, thank you, Steve. I, I think that what what this moment of time is, uh, you know, from the awards and, and, and what's happening now and, and what will happen in the future, reflects the our culture uh, values of everybody. It's not just uh, uh, myself, DJ International, or the Family Film Awards. I think that the, the genius behind with what Antonio is doing is he's reflecting a cultural value that needs to uh, need to be seen, and not needs to be seen. The, whole, the most people know it; they just have not been uh, have the ability to um, to uh, have it at front page news. I mean, we're, we're our our news is is so uh, uh, you know directed in a particular way, but but I think his values and his expression is really a a common person uh, 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 perspective. Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm going to just say one thing and give the phone back to Antonio. I just want to say that in a world where everyone is fighting and, and bringing all the different, the differences are being highlighted more than the, uh, you know, the, the uh, uniting factors of human beings. For someone to bring love into the equation is such a, such a uh, turmoil across the world, I think this really, really states the the essence of what Antonio is doing and needs to be celebrated. I'm going to give the phone back to Antonio. It was very nice talking to you. All right, Steve, Thank thanks you. for your words and, and uh, great consciousness, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes. Yeah, uh, okay. Antonio. So, yeah, so, so Steve, Steve, I think, articulated it, yeah? I'm sorry? I say I, uh, Steve definitely understands what's going on. And because you understand, Marjorie, because you've been with me at the United Nations, before that we are the same page, your family, your slave, your sister, your son. I'm not, it's not mine. It's belongs to you and your family as well. That's why we are, we have to hey. share to our audience around the world. When we are teamwork, we have one yes. large market. That's what it is. It's the power, power of large market where we are going together. So let me just say this, with, with uh, the conversation that uh, uh, Robbie Wells and I just had, uh, he it definitely invited DJ International to his inaugural, inaugural ball uh, as president. Um, so, so we're going to be there uh, spinning records at, at the, along with all the great performers. But uh, 
you know, it, it, it's good to show that, that uh, you know, he is incorporating the new technology of spinning records as a DJ with the traditional art of, of performance. So, so that's a good thing. Absolutely. We, are, we have a two campaign last night on each very It was phenomenal in the way we're talking about you with Miss Sonia and her husband and, the, and the, her fiance, Miss Fate. So, and in the very heat again, we're talking. Yesterday, I introduced him to Stanley Black, uh, you, know, you know, Stanley Black, uh, uh, Mogul, uh, uh, Echo. Major Mogul, yeah. Yeah, and also to invite us for the breakfast, billionaire breakfast we're going to have on Sunday. So it was good to talking to you because he was very interested and he, he understands it, DJ and message and, yeah. you know, I'm so, so glad you guys talking and we understand we are on the same page. Well, we're going to have this interview up uh, uh, tomorrow afternoon and uh, I'm going to get you a copy of this and uh, you can forward that to uh, Robbie Wells and, and we're going to be chatting with him in the near future. Meanwhile, I just want to say thank you very much and uh, it's always great you know, having a, a conversation with you and, and your involvement with what we're doing, and I'm glad we're involved with what you're doing. It's my honor, and I'm very blessed to listen to you, you know, talking to you, and uh, thank you to you and to all your listeners to be make together life better for everyone. President, founder of Family Film Awards and Olympia Awards, Antonio Gellini, thank you very much. It's my honor to have you. Ambassador of Olympia Award and Family Award, and uh, you know, side by side, my friend, my heart, my partner, Mr. Rocky Jones, thank you so much. Okay, I will chat with you soon. Have a good time up in Las Vegas. Yes, sir. Bye bye. Okay, ciao. Uh, you're listening to Robbie Wells, 2016 Democratic Presidential Candidate, and you're listening to DJ International Radio. Connecting the world. Connecting the world. With music, music, music. DJ International Radio EU.